Rub up your engines! Okay, today I'm gonna to tell you the naked truth about a 2006 Honda Odyssey van. The good, the bad, and the ugly. Now, this is the man's second Odyssey van. He bought the first one, and then after a while, Honda couldn't fix stuff on it, and he went out and got another one. And he's still kicking himself in the rear end, because he said, I should have listened to you and not worried about saving five grand buying this instead of buying a Sienna. Find out the Siennas are a lot better. But he bought this and it's got 160 something thousand. It still runs okay. Now he wants to know whether you should keep it or not. So we're gonna analyze the whole van. As I went through his records, when he was younger, he was more foolish and he took it to the Honda dealer. And they even ripped them off and sold them a catalytic converter in the past for this thing. And I said, does it burn oil? He says, no, it doesn't burn any oil at all. They obviously ripped them off. The only thing that ruins the cats on these things are if they burn oil, carbon builds up and ruins the cat. So they probably stole them a cat he didn't need. If you're looking at one of these and you saw my video that I made earlier about Honda cylinder deactivation, look under the hood. Most of these all have V6s. At some time they put fours, but they're too slow. But you see, this is a 3.5 VTEC. That's the better engine. The higher level trims in this have cylinder deactivation which is not a good thing. A lot of them, it makes them burn oil. If you saw the video I made a few weeks back, I had one and he said, hey, it was burning oil. So I had the cylinder deactivation system deactivated so it didn't work anymore and it stopped burning oil when it burned oil before. These don't have oil burning problems. It's got 160,000 miles on it. Doesn't burn any oil. They're very good engines. Just realize one thing, Honda's still living in the dark ages. They're still using rubber timing belts on these things. They this is an 06, and maybe some excuse, but the new ones are still using rubber timing belts. You gotta change every 100,000 miles. And yes, they are interference engines. The belt breaks, pistons hit the valves, bend things, expensive. So you gotta change the belt every 100,000 miles to be safe. Nobody else on the planet is really doing that anymore, but Honda just doesn't retool them to put timing chains. I don't know, they're crazy. That's the way they are. Now, the reason people buy these things is because they have a tremendous amount of space, carrying space. There's all kinds of space in these things. You look inside, even the old one has automatic doors. You got all kinds of room. Now you can put other seats in the back. He's got bicycles instead. These carry a tremendous amount of anything you want. And at the same time, an old one like this, you got 26 and a half miles a gallon driving here from Pennsylvania. And he generally gets around 17 driving in town. You can't argue that. Now you're always gonna get lower in town. They're boxy, they're big, heavy, you're stopping and going. But on the highway, 27 miles a gallon for something this big. You know, even the modern ones aren't all that much better. Unless you're going into a hybrid system and then the money gets higher and higher. Pairs get more and more complex. This thing hasn't needed that many repairs. Other than the catalytic converter that probably didn't even need to be done because he went to the dealer. He's learned his lesson. Now he has a private mechanic who used to be a Toyota mechanic. Honda's Toyota's what the heck. So he works on him and he doesn't rip them off. Now these things can last. We'll start it up. There's only one thing. He says the air conditioning rattles. So let's put the AC on. Now that noise you hear is the air conditioning compressor. Now it works perfectly fine. He's got a gauge. The pressures are fine. It blows plenty cold. But it's been making this noise for years and years. He knows eventually the compressor is going to break. Honda air conditioning systems always had weak compressors. That's to be expected. But it still works. And it's still the original one. So, I mean, yeah, eventually you're gonna have to change it. If you don't like that noise, either turn up the stereo or put another compressor on it, or don't use the AC. Hey, the guy lives in Pennsylvania. Doesn't get all that hot in Pennsylvania for very long. Now you can see, as this is more or less a base model, it's got the cloth seats. If you're cheap like me, get cloth seats. They hold up. If this had been a leather one, this would be all ripped and torn and shredded. No, it's not. And they had kids running through this for years and they're still in good shape. The cloth can really take it. Big old trunk, he's got the back seats folded down. Look at this, he's got his bikes in here. He didn't have to take the wheels off. Everybody knows it's a pain flipping those wheels moving. They fit in the back of this thing and it's still got the second row seats. Now this baby's been in Pennsylvania its whole life. You can see the alloy wheels are pitted. You could polish and paint them if you want. They're still there, they don't leak air. And when we look at the undercarriage, it's still real solid. 
realize one thing about Honda. Sure, the old 170s, they were rust pockets, right? Honda, just like Toyota, they know how to rust prevent their cars. This thing isn't rotting away. It's not something you really gotta worry about on the later model ones. Unless you live by the ocean and you drive through the water all the time. I mean, people in Galveston, Texas, they're gonna rust out regardless if you drive on the beach all the time and the salt and the water gets on it, the mist from the sea if you live there is gonna rot them away. But just regular Pennsylvania driving, this thing's still relatively rust free even though it's an 06. He wants to see if this thing is worthwhile to keep. We're gonna plug in the OBD plug. So we'll plug it in here. Turn on our little fancy Japanese only scan tool. I like these standalones a lot better. Put them on a phone. They might be okay for some stuff, but they're slow. A lot of times the software doesn't work. They can't access as much. Spend the extra hundred bucks and get one like this. This particular one is an F401. It's only for Japanese. PS701 Pro. It's only for Japanese. I wrote Japanese only so I don't get confused. Now this is going through 47 different things. It does a lot. And all the 47 scans on to them all. So the engine, everything's okay. The ABS system, you don't expect it to be working on a car this old. So let's see what the codes are. The owner just said it works. It triggered on him, but it says the right wheel speed sensor has a malfunction, left wheel speed sensor failure, right rear speed sensor failure, left speed sensor, voltage current high, brake fluid level low. So, I mean, he really doesn't care. We'll just clear the codes and see if any of them ever come back. And the only other failure is the body control module has a code so we will see what that says it's thinking and we'll see what the body code is and that's another low voltage the battery ever got low it'll trip the codes i'm sure he's replaced the battery a few times in his car what a lot of people don't understand is if you do not reset everything with a fancy machine like this those codes will be there 10 years later so if you ever know a mechanic like me once every few years have him go through your car if he finds stuff like this have him erase all the codes and then Next time you have it looked at, if those codes are gone, it was just because the battery was low and was replaced sometime in the past. Now, if you really want to be a fanatic when you change the battery, you can pay a guy like me to change all the codes, set it to zero after the battery change. Then you don't have to worry about it. The bicycle's in pretty good shape, so let's start it up. And we'll look at live data, because live data is gonna give you all kinds of information of what shape the car is. He wants to know, should he keep this thing? It's a knock-around vehicle now, his kids are grown up and stuff, but he likes it as a knock-around vehicle. He can pick all his bikes in it, go all over the place. It's got scratches on it already, so you don't have to worry about being mad with the shiny new vehicle when some scumbag in a Walmart parking lot decides to smash into the side of your car. So we'll go to live data, collect all. You can see even on this older one, you got an awful lot of information. The air-fuel ratio is perfect. Perfect, almost. It's 1.00.99. You can't get much closer than that. 0 0.99 to 1.00. The short term fuel trim is only 1%. It's running 1% lean. Who really cares on something that's this old? And on bank two, it's 1.05. And that's pretty close to perfect. One is off 1%, one, one is off 1.05%. So that's pretty even considering that tiny amount of difference. Battery's fine, it's charging. As you can see, there's an awful lot of information on these. We're only at the C's. Six cylinders, no misfires. They're all running perfectly. So it's a Honda. You expect these things to last a long time. This one's holding up quite well. All that mileage. Still running really well. Now the owner just told me at around 90,000 miles, he changed the water pump and the timing belt because it's an interference engine. So he's done what he's supposed to do. If he wants to be a fanatic at 189, he could change it again. Who knows how many miles he's putting on it, but that's the one thing you gotta worry about. It is an interference engine. It doesn't have a chain. The belt will fly off and the pistons will hit the valve. So that's the one thing you gotta worry about. So we'll take it for a road trip. He's worried about wheel bearing noise and different things. So here we go and I'll listen. That still rides pretty good. Going down the road, it's not bouncing too bad. Interesting enough, it's still got four original struts on it, except one, his honest mechanic, not the dealership, they tried to sell on the farm. His honest mechanic said the spring is broken on one of the back ones. So he even left the original strut in there and he just replaced the broken spring and it still rides quite well now he's worried about noises but i'm listening a very very tiny little bit of humming 
from the right front. But I wouldn't worry about it. I had a customer with a Honda that had noise five times as loud and four years later. He was still driving it down the road. I wouldn't bother with changing them yet. Now it's typical that the right front wears out first because when you're driving, what do you see right in front of you is the left front. When you hit holes, you usually hit them with the right front because you don't see the perfect lineup and that's what you hit the holes with. My wife's always hitting holes with the right front of her car. It drives me nuts when I'm riding right. Bang! But it's a Toyota and it's still going, so it's an 07 and we haven't had to replace the wheel bearings on it yet. Now he does have a little whistling noise when he accelerates, but it's not whistling, it's bearing noise. The alternator's making a humming. We saw it's putting out, charges, it goes perfectly fine, so who really cares if it finally goes out? Just like his air conditioning compressor. He says it's been making that rattly noise for years now and it still blows cold. Like I say, Hondas have weak air conditioning. You back bad on these things. It still blows cold. It's still the original one. So you can't really complain. Complain about anything if you want to, but it doesn't really make sense with this mileage. And it still works. So what's the truth about this Odyssey van? Well, like I said, he was kicking himself because he saved five grand didn't get a Sienna van. But for him, it wasn't that bad. He's got the engine that doesn't have the cylinder deactivation so it doesn't burn oil. That right front wheel bearing is a little worn, but he's kind of touchy on that. I wouldn't even have thought about it until I listened to it. Just a tiny little bit of wear. So he'll keep this car. His wife's got a Camry hybrid that they take all over the place. Gets better gas mileage. He recently changed the automatic transmission fluid in this and in his Toyotas. The Toyotas, he took out the fluid and he said, am I doing something wrong? It's still all clean. And when he took this out, it was dirty as can be. And he put in new fluid and he hasn't had any transmission problems. It shifts perfectly fine now. He's lucky on that. But he says he drives like an old man and his wife drove most of the mileage with kids in the car and was cautious. So really a lot of the Odyssey van problems are hot rodders. The customers I had in Houston that burn out their trannies, they used them for business. They loaded them with weight. They were hot riders, peeling out, driving like lunatics. And that, of course, is going to wear the transmission out further. So, in this case, it was dirty, but it's still working okay. If you are looking for one of these, remember, don't get the ones that have cylinder deactivation. And have a guy like me check it out with a scan tool like I did in this video to see if it's got any kind of transmission code problems because a lot of them do get transmission problems. So if you never want to miss another one of my new car repair videos, remember to ring that bell.